Have you heard of the metopic suture or the frontal suture? You don't have one. This girl does. Um, let's talk about what happens to this suture and what it might mean clinically. And um, some adults do have one. See, look, this fetal skull here has got a midline suture here. This is the frontal bone. This is the frontal bone. In the adult, that suture has disappeared. Um, so in the fetal skull, this is the anterior fontanelle, and this is the metopic suture, or the frontal suture, running from the anterior fontanelle around to the nasion, this uh, suture, like at the bridge of the nose. Now, the, the, the sutures in the fetus and in the growing baby and child are really useful. So they allow a little bit of movement of bones so that the head can pass through the birth canal. And also after birth, they allow for rapid growth of the bones to keep up with the rapid growth of the brain. Um, but what about this one then? In the adult skull, sutures are strong fibrous joints and they're wiggly because the bones are like interdigitated, interdig interdig something like that. Uh, with one another to make a super strong joint that doesn't move, that protects the brain. Um, that's the purpose of these sutures. So the fetal sutures have to become like this at some point. So while in the fetal skull there is this metopic suture or frontal suture, between, between three and nine months after birth we see fusion. What that means is that the continuous suture will be replaced in sections by bone running smoothly, directly from one side to the other. That is, this suture will no longer be a continuous wiggle all the way down here, but there'll be smooth patches and bits of suture and smooth patches. And then that suture will be completely obliterated in most people by about seven years of age. So fusion and obliteration leads to then a single frontal bone with no suture. In a study of 500 adult skulls, 2.5% uh, of skulls, 2.5% of people had a persistent metopic or frontal suture. That is to say 2.5% of people have a persistent frontal suture. They still have it when they're adults. This leads to, well, there are frontal sinuses in here, right? This means those frontal sinuses are smaller or absent. Um, but otherwise, that should be about it. It shouldn't be mistaken for a fracture because if you were to look at this on CT, it doesn't look like a fracture. It looks like, it looks like a suture. It's wiggly, right? So that's a persistent um, frontal suture, but what happens if that suture closes before it should? Well, um, these sutures are there to aid in rapid bone growth, and sometimes this suture will close before it should. You can imagine that means that this bone here cannot grow laterally as quick as it normally would, whereas the posterior parts of the skull can grow rapidly which leads to a triangular appearance. So the front is narrow, the back is wide, trigonocephaly, like a triangular appearance to the head. Uh, this premature fusion, well, fusion is synostosis or craniosynostosis. And we're talking about a premature synostosis here, right? That will have an effect on brain development, or maybe it's the brain development that's having an effect on the bone growth. Uh, the bones and the soft tissues, they grow together, they work together, they um, work interactively. Um, now the frontal bone is also forming the superior parts of the orbits. So a change in the rates of growth here is likely to change the appearance of the orbits, so the appearance of the eyes. Uh, but this, I think, is um, a good demonstration of how the number of bones that we have changes through life. You used to have two frontal bones, now most of you just have one. Okay, I hope that was interesting. See you next week. Mm -hmm.